One of the things that really surprised me nicely was something that I've seen or noticed even before reading the release notes of the beta. And yes, this one here is once again recording on the beta version. It is currently on beta 3, but the beta 4 has already been released. And what did I notice? Well, for example, if we go down here, there is something new next to configuration button and shows that there is an update. This number will of course increase depending on how many things in Home Assistant have an update available. So for example, it can be OS, new version of OS, new release of Home Assistant itself, add-ons, supervisor, etc. But then, if we click on this button here, which previously popped up the large window that offered us to see release notes and update, now we have much slicker window that tells us that the installed version is this one, the latest version is that one. We have once again option to read release notes, which is something that was also previously available, and then we have option to skip or install. So let me quickly install beta 4 and we'll continue with today's video. While we wait for installation of the latest version of Home Assistant, let me thank all the wonderful people who are supporting me on the YouTube channel and have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support, but also thanks to everybody who watched, liked or subscribed to my channel. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below. And now let's continue with today's video. System is still booting up, so our dashboard hasn't fully loaded. And yes, it's not a mistake. This here is not called Lovelace anymore, we are now calling it Dashboard. This doesn't change anything in terms of functionality, but now new users will not have issues trying to understand what Lovelace actually is. And we can start calling it what it really is, it's Dashboard. While we are already on the subject of dashboards, some of you may still be using auto-generated dashboards. And you always wondered how you can disable or remove entity from being presented in that dashboard. Previously, if you wanted to do that, you had two options, either to delete the entity or device itself, or to disable it. Now we have a new option, and that is option to hide entities. Let's go to configuration, integration, Entities, and let's find one Twitch entity that we do not want to see anymore. For example, it's Zuma. More or less, here everything is the same, but if we want to hide it from the UI, we can go to Advanced Settings and select here Hidden. So you do not need to disable entity to make it invisible. Where you can use this? Well, for example, if you have any smart speaker connection and you have some entities that you do not want to be presented to that smart speaker, for example, Google a smart speaker, you can hide this entity. Hiding it will make it invisible in the UI if it's auto-generated and it will not be pushed or exposed to such smart services. On the other hand, all the data related to this sensor or entity will still be recorded and tracked. So you will still have historical values, but the entity itself will not be visible and not be displayed automatically. Or for example, if you have group of lights, such as these ceiling lights for me, which I have five ceiling lights, but I only want to control one single light and that is a ceiling group light. If you add them to the group, you can then hide all the individual lights and they will not be presented in the UI or dashboard anymore. While we are on the subject of the groups, let's check them out. Because yes, in this version, we now finally have option to add groups through the UI. Let's go to configuration, automations and scenes, and helpers. And previously we had only input related helpers. But if we now click on add helper, the list of helpers is very, very, very long. If you click on the group, it will expand and show you all the possible groups you can have. So you can have binary sensor group, cover group, fan group, light group, log group, media player group, and the switch group. And as I mentioned, if we, for example, go to light group, create new, that will be called ceiling, 
we can add all the ceiling members to it. And as I mentioned, you can hide all those individual entities, but this can also be done through the group setting. We can just tick the box here and those individual lights will not be visible in the dashboard or auto-generated dashboard, but also will not be exposed to smart speakers. Let's click on submit. And now we have a ceiling light group. And that's how you add groups to Home Assistant. And that, I think, is something that a lot of people have been waiting and asking for. One additional change is to the switches. Let's go back to Configuration, Integrations, and search for one specific switch. For me, it's called Piano. If we look at Switch Piano, it is a normal switch in Home Assistant. But in reality, that's light. What we can do now is select here Show Switch as Light. Update. And we now have new light visible in Home Assistant and the switch is hidden. And that is a very nice way on how to repurpose the switches that are in reality not switches. And as I mentioned, there are additional helpers that were added in this version. Derivative, where you can create derivative now through the UI. Integration, minimum, maximum, mean value, etc. sensor, threshold, times of the day, which you can use to create specific names for periods in the day. And the last one, which for me is a great change, is the utility meter, which was something that you had to create previously in the YAML code. And as this update, as many updates before, is jam-packed with all the new things, we have one additional great thing that I believe a lot of people will use. And I'm looking forward to see all the automations that will pop up from this. And that is updates. If we search for update, you will now see a new type of entity called update. And for any device that is supporting it, and currently, as far as I know, Synology, WLED, of course, Home Assistant itself, support already this new entity. What it would allow you is allow you to see if there is an update available, and if update is available, you can use it to trigger and update that specific device, service, etc. As you can see, I have it for Synology, all the add-ons in the Home Assistant, WLED, some more Home Assistant add-ons, WLED, etc. Unfortunately, I cannot show you how it looks when it's triggered because I try to keep all my systems up to date. And this is something that I'm really recommending you do the same because you never know, there may be some security issue that will be fixed with the latest update. If you are running your Home Assistant in a container or Docker, there is one new thing that you may like which wasn't present in the Docker or container version of Home Assistant and that is backups. Yes, previously you had to run Home Assistant OS or Home Assistant Supervised to use backup functionality. This has now been ported to the Home Assistant container or Docker version 2, so you can use it to backup your Home Assistant, which is a really big change and a great addition. In the version 2022.4, zones have also stayed. If we look at the state, we will see here the number of people or persons that are available in that zone. The zone can have state zero, meaning nobody is currently in the zone, but also it can have higher number. So now you can play with this and use it in your automations. To trigger your automations when the number of people in the zone starts to drop or reaches zero and vice versa, when it jumps from zero to one, two or three. Some of the sensors will now allow you to adjust unit of measurement directly in the UI. Let's check that one out. Let's go to Configuration, Integrations, Entities, and let's search for Balcony. We have Balcony Temperature, and here you have new option, and that is unit of measurement. You can change it from Celsius to Fahrenheit or Kelvin depending on your preference. The Klingon language is still not supported. Same thing goes for the pressure. 
HPA, PA, KPA bar, C bar, M bar, MMHG, etc. Is anybody really using PSI to measure the pressure of air in a normal home environment? There are some additional changes, but since this video would be too long, I will be skipping through them. Just to mention them, this is the new and updated selectors, and this is good if you are working with the blueprints or creating blueprints. Also, variables on triggers. Now you can use, as it says, variables inside triggers or on triggers. The list of other noteworthy changes is, once again, very, 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 very long. We have a lot of new integrations now available. The list of the new UI or the integrations that have been migrated to the UI is also very long. But with all the good changes, we also have breaking changes. And remember, breaking changes are not here to make you mad. Breaking changes are here to improve on something. And unfortunately, improving can have impact on existing automations, scripts, integrations, etc. And if you're updating to the latest version, which I always recommend, is go through the list of breaking changes. For example, utility meter, version, who is WLED, all of them have a breaking change or two. As announced, the GPIO integration is no more. If you really need GPIO integration, you can go to HACS and look there for custom integration. Also, these integrations are not available anymore. Apple Push Notification Service, Media Player Classic Home Cinema, Open Z-Wave, because it was deprecated for some time now, Smart Hub and Z-Wave or the old Z-Wave integration. What are your thoughts on the latest release of Home Assistant? I know that a lot of people will be pleased with the addition of the groups, but also some other helpers in the UI. What is the addition in this release that you've been waiting for a long, long time? Or what are the things that you really do not like about this release? I know that a lot of people will not be happy with the changes and moving of so many integrations in the UI, because some of you still prefer YAML. And this is it for this Home Assistant How-To with Bearded Tinker. I really do hope that you did enjoy this video and that it was useful for you to prepare you for the next release of Home Assistant. If you have any kind of a comment, question or idea, don't forget that you can drop me a line down below in the comment section of the video. But also feel free to go to the Discord server and the link to Discord server is in the video description. If you did like this video, please give me a thumbs up, it really means a lot. If you still haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified on the future video releases and of course the streams. And I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.